So this is the M1 MacBook Air. And I think it's one of the best computers I've ever owned. And also it's one of the best laptops that you can buy right now. So today I'm gonna to give you 10 reasons why I think this is such an amazing computer. So let's get into it. So number one, performance. MacBook Airs weren't really known for their performance, but this laptop has very good performance. Whether I'm doing 4K video editing on this, in fact, this particular video has been edited on this computer. I've been using Affinity Photo to edit 24 megapixel draw pictures coming out of this A7C camera over here, or general web browsing, or whatever you might wanna do, this laptop can handle it. And this is the base model M1 laptop with an eight core CPU and a seven core GPU, the $999 version, the cheapest one that you can buy. And it performs amazingly well. And this laptop absolutely blows my 2013 high spec iMac out of the water. I can't wait to see what they do with the pro models of these laptops when they come out later this year. But so far performance has been absolutely outstanding. The second thing I would say, battery life. This laptop has insane battery life. I've been using it for about three weeks and I use this as my secondary computer. I mostly work on my iMac over here, but in the evenings when I wanna chill on the couch and maybe like watch some YouTube videos, surf the net a little bit, edit some photographs, that's when I'm using this computer. So I get about two to three hours roughly of usage per day on this laptop. And I've had to charge it once a week. So the advertised 18 hours of battery life and mixed usage is actually true. And it is a game changer because uh, just the way you use this laptop changes when you know you have that much battery life on it. Now, for example, if I was going on a weekend trip, I wouldn't take my iPad, I would take this and I wouldn't even carry the charger with me because I know it's gonna last me the whole weekend. It's that good. The third thing, fanless design. This computer makes zero sound. I'm using this computer right now for notes that I've taken about my thoughts about this laptop. And I know for a fact that my mic's right here and there's zero sound coming out of this laptop because it does not have a fan in it. And usually the concern would be whether it overheats and I have not even once felt this laptop heating up on me. I've been using it for two, three hours at a stretch on my lap and not once did I feel that it's warmed up or anything. Even when stressing it out, like exporting 4K video on this thing, it's fine. It's, I don't know how they've done it. It's some kind of magic, but it, it works just beautifully. Fourth thing, the form factor. This laptop is super thin, light, portable. It easily fits in a bag. And even though this design is from 2015, that's when the new MacBook Pros came out, it still looks beautiful. And the way that it's built, it's all aluminum construction. It feels A grade in terms of build quality. Point number five, the Touch ID, function keys, the keyboard and the trackpad on this computer are absolutely amazing. Now, Mamta has a 2018 MacBook Pro with the touch bar, but I personally prefer using this because it gives you much faster access to shortcuts like changing your volume, muting your laptop or changing the brightness of the screen, things like that are much quicker to do with the function keys on the top. And if you're a pro user and use a lot of shortcuts with the F1, F2 keys, this makes it much quicker. The Touch ID is brilliant. Not only can you log into the laptop super quick, but you can also authenticate payments. You can auto complete forms all just with the touch of your finger. And that works brilliantly well on this laptop. The Magic Keyboard, uh, which they improved since Mamta's 2018 MacBook Pro, feel a lot better and they're also more durable. The trackpad on all Mac machines actually are amazing. They're multi-touch. They work super well. You can scroll with two fingers, move things around with three fingers. The gestures work flawlessly. I think it's one of the reasons I switched to Mac. The input method of the touchpad is so smooth on Macs. It's got a glass coating on top of it, so it feels really nice. And it's just a pleasure to use this trackpad in general. Number six, the screen on this thing. So you've got a 13.3 inch retina display with a P3 color gamut. It doesn't get quite as bright as the Pros, but you're not gonna notice that. And this screen specification is amazing for highly color accurate jobs as well. So if you need to do video editing, photo editing, those kind of things on a machine like this, you can do it because the P3 color gamut makes sure that the color accuracy of this display is very good. And the resolution for a screen size like this is brilliant because you don't see any pixels at all. It looks fantastic. Point number seven. The IO on this machine is super fast. You get two Thunderbolt 4 ports and the Thunderbolt 4 specification allows for any device that you plug into this computer to have the full speed that you're looking for from that device. So if I plug in my T7 portable hard drive into this machine, which is a portable SSD, it gives me the full close to 1000 Mbps speed that the hard drive is capable of. Not all Thunderbolt C ports are made the same. So some might not give you the full speed. 
Additionally, these ports can be used to power a 4K display, use any kind of USB-C dongle, which I have been using. I got a really cheap one and it works flawlessly. So uh, any USB 3 devices that you connect onto that are gonna get the full speed as well. So the IO on this computer is future-proof. Number eight, this computer has an extremely fast internal SSD. Most computers have a performance bottleneck in their hard drive. The hard drive isn't fast enough to keep up with the processor and that's why you feel like your computer is slow. It's either usually your RAM or your hard disk. Like if you just plug in an SSD into a pretty old computer, you're gonna get a huge performance boost out of that upgrade. But on this machine, the internal SSD is super fast, almost 3000 Mbps per second. Because the SSD is so fast on this machine, it can actually be used as temporary RAM or a swap file. And even though this computer only has eight gigs of RAM, it performs more like a computer with 16 gigs of RAM would. So that really gives you a big performance boost overall in the day-to-day -day usage of this machine. You can transfer huge files onto this thing, access 4K footage, 8K RAW, whatever you need, and the hard disk is gonna keep up. Now, Apple does charge you a big premium if you want internal storage on this thing, but I would suggest getting something like the T7 SSD, and that way you don't need to get a very big hard drive internally on your machine, unless that's something you really need. Number nine, software compatibility. Now, if you guys didn't know, the M1 processors have been updated and for the first time, Apple is using their own M1 processors inside this computer. So they switched away from Intel, which means they no longer support the x86 architecture, which Macs have been using for all this time and PCs still use. The ARM transition has been pretty amazing from Apple's standpoint in terms of software. They're supporting every single app that was created before on x86 platform using Rosetta which will automatically convert it into an ARM-based processor. Everything that Apple creates, like Final Cut and Logic, have all already been optimized for the M1. So, so far, I haven't really run into any kind of software limitation on this. There are a few, which I'll get to in the end of this video. Another amazing feature about the M1 platform is that you can also open up iOS and iPad OS apps on this machine. Now, not all the apps are supported and not all of them look that great because they're kind of fixed to certain dimensions. If you've had that app that's on your iPad that you always wished was on your computer, now it's possible and very likely that it's probably gonna be able to be installed on your M1 Mac machine as well. Number 10 is the instant wake feature. So this laptop turns on instantly as soon as you open up the lid. It kind of feels like an iPad or an iPhone. Just imagine how quick that feels when you click on that wake button, how quickly it comes on. That's what this laptop feels like. Now, it's not like the old MacBook Pros were slow, but once you start experiencing this, those do start feeling slow. So the instant wake feature is absolutely amazing. I told you guys it's gonna be 10, but I have 11 bonus feature is that this computer can actually be used as a desktop and it works really well as a desktop. So here you can see an example of how it looks like with a 32 inch BenQ monitor, 4K display. And uh, it just works flawlessly in this configuration because it doesn't have a fan in it either. So there's no sound. You can connect your Bluetooth keyboard and external hard disk or whatever you require and dock it in place and you'll have an amazing little desktop machine, very similar in performance to the M1 Mac mini. And then when you need to make it portable, just unplug one cable and walk away. It's a really nice desktop setup if that's something that you're looking for, especially for a home office or something like that. And then you need the extra portability as well. So that's like 10 plus one reasons why I think you should get a MacBook Air. It is an absolutely brilliant laptop, especially for the price considering it's close to $1,000 and you can even get it cheaper if you're a student for $899. I think this is gonna be an amazing laptop that's gonna last you easily for four or five years and you're gonna be able to do pretty much any work that you wanna do on this, whether it's software development, video editing, photo editing. It's a very capable machine. The MacBook Pro, which also has an M1 processor, has some advantages over this, especially if you have sustained performance requirements like you're editing like a one hour 4K video or something like that and you want it to you know, render out as quickly as possible. Really intensive programs and if you really want the touch bar, only in that case would I suggest you go for the M1 MacBook Pro. And if you have those kind of requirements, then I would suggest wait for the M1X laptops, the more professional laptops that Apple's gonna be releasing soon. Now let's get to some negatives and some difficulties that I've faced with this laptop. There haven't been much, but 
Some of the Final Cut Pro plugins that I use are not compatible with M1 yet. So I've had to edit on this machine, move it up to the other machine and then use those plugins. I'm guessing that's just a matter of time. It's gonna be a few months or weeks until those uh, plugins get updated and then I should be able to install it on this machine. But you might face similar issues with other software as well like Photoshop or Logic or other pro applications that you might use that have a lot of external or third party plugins. You might face some issues with the M1 machines. The second issue for me personally is the lack of Windows virtualization. On the previous MacBooks, you could actually run Windows either in bootcamp or through virtualization. Unfortunately on this, you're not able to do that as yet. There have been some workarounds with using Windows for ARM and virtualizing that, but Windows doesn't officially let you buy Windows for ARM yet. They only have it for their own line of laptops. So it's a little bit finicky to use it and it doesn't have great emulation either. So uh, if you really need some Windows applications that are critical for your work, then I would suggest don't go for the M1 right now. Wait until uh, Windows and Microsoft figure out their M1 strategy and probably then pull the trigger on the M1 laptop. But if you don't have Windows requirements, then I would definitely suggest get this laptop. It is absolutely amazing and you will be super happy with your purchase. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts about the M1 MacBook Air. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.